Well guys, I got an interesting package from Dustin. Now, of course I have a challenge lock, um, built like build on the quick set keyway looks like. And nothing too much on you unusual about that except there's no retainer on the back there but that's okay I'll be careful here's the interesting part though well you we have a key for it all mummied here he sent me a brand new Goso car lock pick set and I've reviewed these before and I'm grateful he didn't put the constraint on me with this set that he put on me with this homemade pick. He says he wants me to use this homemade pick to pick that challenge lock. I'm glad he didn't say I'd have to use the ghost. I'd rather cut my own tallywhacker off with this homemade pick than to have to use a goso for anything. But here's what the pick looks like. So finished on a sandstone in a river bottom, but it is pretty tough material. I tried, tried it out earlier. It seems like it's pretty hard material and it should fit right in there. So there's no reason I couldn't use this. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. I feel a pretty strong spring in there right around position number two. God, I hate super spring. Okay, but at least I'm not going to break my pick. I'll break Dustin's pick. Let me try to get this halfway straight and really clamp it up because with these super springs, sometimes you got to put some pretty good leverage on it. Um, make sure that's still free, and it is. Got a little flop there. Let's zoom in and put a little mark on here. I'm going to try to pick it, I guess, clockwise. So let's torque it over there, and I'll just put the mark right here. All right, let's try this guy. Get in there. Let me take the tension off. There we go. And it seems like two or three of them back there are bound up. So very, very light tension. And they're still bound up. There we go. Okay, that was three. I got a little fault set going. Looking for some counter rotation now. You know, pick may not have the finest finish on it, but it's working pretty good. There's a little counter rotation right there. Okay, we're on pin one, and you see I got a deeper fault set. Okay, only one pin is binding right now and it's really bound and it's pin two the rest of them are pretty springy so i've got a feeling that pin two is probably some kind of trap all right let me unwind it a little bit get a little click from him but nothing let me check to see if anybody else is starting to bind nope still pin two All right, I still got the fault set. Looking for counter rotation. That's a, ah, oh, that was pin four. And there we go. All right. Not a trap lock, nothing but super springs. All right. Dustin, I got to say, it is not the prettiest pick, but I'm definitely going to try to use that again. It's, it's nice and strong, and it's a right amount of hook, right amount of depth. It'd be a medium hook, so... Worked out pretty good. All right, let's try this guy. Let's see what Dustin's put in here. Um, let's go ahead and check the key. I'm trying to make sure that back is not going to fall off. And... Uh, almost cut towards my hand. Hey, that was easy. And I know that would freak you guys out. Okay, we got a nice low one there. And that appears to be hand cut. And the rest of these are factory cut. So apparently Dustin put in a gatekeeper right in the very front here. And that first one is cut all the way to the top. So that's a little bit of trickery. 
rough going in. Uh-oh. I should not have unlocked it or locked it back up. Oh, it's starting to turn. Man, we're getting our fault set as deep as we had it, but there's something that's not quite right here. Let me push it up. Dustin said in his letter the key does work. Maybe just not reliably. Definitely. This will teach me to lock them back up. All right. Um, I would say, let me just cut off the camera and repick it and then get back to the gutting. But then there would be the question as to whether while it was the camera was off, if I replaced some pins. I think it's harder to open with the key. Let me turn it upside down, see if that makes a difference. Maybe he doesn't have springs in one of them. All right, let's try a little bump action. Let me get a screwdriver. Let me find one with a hard handle. Do I have one? Yes. Uh, maybe we can do a little bumping action. There we go. I saw you the key work. Just a little finicky, that's all. Man, I'm glad that worked out. All right, now we can take the back piece off. I know what you guys are saying, but the key does work. Give a little credit where credit is due. Get in there. And is this the guy we want? Should be. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, I am seeing a little weirdness here. Look, number two has been walled out quite a bit. It's got threading in it, it looks like. You can see that pin literally flop, or flopping around inside of there. Pretty cool. Same with chamber one. Same with chamber three, now that I'm looking close at it, not through the camera lens. Um, let's get this up here. See what Dustin did to us. All right, we had a standard. We got a standard. He, he fell out of there. Um, that was weird. We had two key pins fall out of chamber two. This is actually not a key pin. This is a driver pin. So chamber two, when we start looking at the body, may not have a pin in it. All right, chamber three. Chamber three is kind of weird too. When you take a look at this guy, there's something on the top of that. Oop. Something on the top of that. I don't quite know what to make of that. Maybe again, there's an interlocking pin in the body of the lock, I don't know. As I'm looking at this, go back to chamber two, the, the key or the driver pin is a standard diameter and the key pin is a subcaliber. It's almost like it came out in a, of an American or a, a master lock. All right, pin four, standard, pin five, standard. And the first three in here, kind of rough looking, but they are all threaded. It looks like chamber two is boogered up a little bit like the wrong size thread was used. I don't know, the wrong size tap, rather. All right, let's see what kind of technology we got upstairs. All right, chamber one, it is right at the shear line. It is barely flopping. 
but it's just barely breaking the shear line. Really light spring in there. Made out of a key pin. It is a homemade spool. All right, chamber two is popping up past the shear line. And it is also a homemade. I thought there was going to be no pin in here, but there certainly is. We got a, an abundance of pins in chamber two. The springs, I, I didn't see one in chamber one. I don't think chamber one has a spring. And I don't think chamber two has a spring either. No spring. All right, pin three. All right, we have a little T-pin sticking up inside of there. And I'm probably not going to be able to grab him with my pinning tweezers. I'll use this guy. Grab him by the needle and pull him out of there. Homemade T-pin. And let's see if we have a spring. No spring that I can feel or see. All right, chamber five. Okay, again, just look at him. He just barely pops past the shear line there. There has to be springs in this thing. I know in this one there's a spring because he popped up, but the other one, I thought the other ones popped up past the shear line a little bit too. Okay, there is our Bic lighter spring. Number four. Again, it looks like a little homemade Cool. Barely breaking the shear line. Come out, come out. There we go. There's another spring to another another Bic lighter spring. So that's probably what we have in the rest of them. I can't quite see them and I can't quite reach them with the uh, with the other plier or the other tweezer. All right, let's keep looking. There must be some spring. I don't see any in three. Oh, yes, I see one in three. I see them down through those cracks that connect each of the chambers. There's definitely a spring in the bottom of there. There he is. Come out of there. Let's just dump him. He doesn't want to come out now. Great. Let me get my beater block in. There he is. Just on the off chance somebody else is stuck, let's give it a little. Nope, chamber. There's another one. I don't know if he came out of one or two. All right, there we go, guys. Dustin, quite an evil lock, mostly because of the rough finish on the inside of these, I think. Had a little trouble, probably with one and two. Um, I don't know if the spring actually gave me any trouble on this guy or not. There was so much crunching. Uh, this T-pin is kind of nasty as well. And the rest of these guys, these two super springs are the ones, I really don't like super springs because I've been breaking so many picks. They don't really add a lot to security. They just add a lot of frustration to me when I break, a, break an expensive pick. So consequently, I don't use anything valuable. So thank you for sending this just on the off chance I had to stress something, but luckily we didn't. Anyway, Justin, uh, Dustin, thank you, sir, for the lock. Everybody else, appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal. I think I'm going to send this back to Dustin along with, if he's working with that kind of stuff, I'm going to send him one of these two for going to all the trouble. I get the impression Dustin uh, is one of our younger pickers. So I'm going to send him a brand new uh, UK Bump Keys Praxis kit. Thanks, guys. If you like the idea of growing the Locksport community, please consider supporting the Lock Lab by either becoming a Patreon or clicking the Join button below.